Hi, my name is Katie Bliss. I'm the training manager for interpretation and education at Mather Training Center here in Harpers Ferry. And I'm going to read a piece by David Larson called A Time to Choose. In early September 1862, the American Civil War was technically not about slavery. Of course, many people, Northern and Southern, white and African American, cared passionately about the subject and understood things might change. But officially, the North waged a war of reunification and a union that sanctioned the rights to own humans as property. On September 15, 1862, 12,500 Union troops surrendered to Confederates at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. Most Southern forces left the scene quickly after their victory, marching to fight the Battle of Antietam 17 miles away and two days later. Even though they had surrendered, things looked pretty good for the 12,500 Union troops. Paroles were common at that stage of the war. A prisoner signed a piece of paper promising not to fight again and was sent home until officials from both sides formally exchanged imaginary prisoners. It was an honor system that saved resources on both sides. At Harper's Ferry in September, the process moved quickly. Enlisted Union troops surrendered their weapons, but officers were allowed to keep their sidearms. Colonel Trimble, the 60th Ohio Volunteer Infantry Regiment's commander, was concerned about a number of African Americans who worked as servants and teamsters for his regiment. Confederates were rounding up hundreds of contrabands or runaway enslaved people. Hundreds of contrabands left their bondage for the protection of the Union Army at Harper's Ferry. In 1862, these blacks cooked, labored, scouted, spied, and provided other support for the United States military. Most of these African Americans, like countless others all over the South, saw the war as an opportunity to end slavery. But the African Americans working for Trim Trimble's regiment were not runaways. They were free people from Ohio. The Confederates were sending African Americans captured in Harper's Ferry back into slavery. Colonel Trimble wanted to protect the free blacks from Ohio and approached Confederate A.P. Hill Hill issued passes to the free African Americans, and the issue seemed settled. On the morning of September 16th, Trimble and the 60th Ohio prepared to march across the pontoon bridge into Maryland. A Confederate cavalry squad was stationed there to keep things orderly and ensure that no blacks slipped across with the Union troops. Trimble showed the Confederates General Hill's passes for the Ohio free blacks. Maybe the Confederate soldiers thought the passes forged but for whatever reason, they refused to allow the African Americans to pass. Colonel Trimble responded by reaching into his holster, drawing his revolver, and holding the Confederate officer at gunpoint until the entire 60th, including the African Americans, were across the river. No one knows Trimble's motives. Perhaps he was an abolitionist. Perhaps he felt he had some special duty to those blacks, was tired of losing, or simply hated the Confederates. In any case, Colonel Trimble stand on the Potomac River represents countless such incidents, which in individuals, African Americans and whites, had to make a choice about status, race, and slavery. The war was indeed changing. Just a week later, after the Battle of Antietam, Abraham Lincoln issues the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. Some thought Union troops would not support Lincoln's actions and might even throw down their weapons and go home rather than fight a war against slavery. But they did not. Indeed, there was much grumbling. But enough African Americans took freedom into their own hands, proclaimed their own humanity, and confronted white officers like Trimble did. These confrontations and moral dilemmas helped make the war something else. As messy, corrupt, tragic, and immoral as the war would continue to be, it was now a war about freedom.